What does the carnivore diet do to the gut microbiome? We'll call this part one. What's up everybody? How's everybody doing? Most of what people profess to know about the human gut microbiome is not knowledge at all. It's theories, hypotheses, guesses. Anybody who makes definitive authoritative statements about our gut microbiome is most likely a shill for some other agenda. Unless their presentation is full of blatant speculation, full of maybes and probabilities, take everything they say with a huge grain of salt. These know-it-alls with their egos inflated by legions of sycophantic clapping seals will often contradict themselves or make patently idiotic, purely ideological statements such as by far the greatest advancements into nutritional science in the last 12 years have been in the field of the gut microbiome. Gut bacteria are the key to our physical and our mental health. The hundreds of different types that we are aware of all fit very neatly into one of two different enterotypes. The beneficial Prevotella strains and harmful Bacteroides. The Prevotella type all have one thing in common. The good guys are all whole foods vegans. Meat eater? Bad! Vegan? Good! That is the vegan ideology. Likewise, bad bacteria eat meat, good bacteria are ethical vegans, of course. Hey, Hench, if bacteria have moral agency, how are those antibiotics Goji Man prescribed you for your whole food plant based gut issues? How are they even vegan? Huh? If bacteria follow this simple dichotomy of black and white and good and evil, how come your boyfriend Gojima removes most whole plant foods from the diet in order to heal the gut with antibiotics? If the vegan diet heals the gut, Goji Man, why do you use medications and not the whole food plant-based diet that you promote for a healthy gut? How come? Does anyone actually believe that bacteria actually choose between plant or animal-based foods? Or are they more interested in consuming macro and micronutrients regardless of the source? But let's hear what Stench thinks. You're gonna be rich. Doesn't he look like he smells? Look, our gut microbiome is far too complex for the smartest of scientists to have figured it out. But dried a ball sack and praying mantis over here, both of whom look sicker than a smoker's cough passing through an intensive care unit on its way to a septic tank. These two sickly looking clowns have figured it out. Oh, and FYI, Hench is also an anti-aging expert. <laughs> You couldn't pay me to take their health advice. All they do is add vice to harmony while claiming to harm less. But I digress. Do, however, witness the sickness. Seriously, how long have scientists been studying the gut microbiome? A decade? Not long enough. They're still discovering new gut bacteria for crying out loud. Some already discovered strains, we still don't know what function they serve. Those strains whose function we do understand probably serve other functions we do not. Just because we have observed certain strains of bacteria feeding on certain nutrients in a petri dish doesn't mean they don't consume other nutrients in vivo, if need be. Do we understand all the relationships between these bacteria? Do they simply coexist, fight, or are they symbionts? At what quantity do good bacteria become bad bacteria? Do bacteria mutate? And why or how? What else besides diet impacts our gut microbiome? How do our other microbiomes, something Gojiman clearly doesn't even know exists, as he refers to the gut microbiome as simply microbiome, as if they were one and the same. But how do our brain, for example, or mouth microbiomes impact the gut microbiome? What about our virome? What? Exactly. On what impacts the carnivore diet has on your microbiome. I will be investigating the diets and the microbiome. Now, I'm sure you will have heard this before, but there is up to 10 times more bacteria in your microbiome. And how do we even know what a healthy gut microbiome looks like? Well, 
Scientists study the general population and look at trends, overlap, similarities in the gut microbiomes of self-reportedly healthy people. Or they study the gut microbiomes of some remote African tribe like the Hadza who are reportedly healthy, that live in a completely different environment, that live a completely different lifestyle, and eat completely different foods than you. Then, the scientists assume, and it's not a bad assumption in my opinion, that that's what a healthy gut microbiome looks like, while others further assume, and this assumption I do have a huge problem with, that every healthy gut microbiome should look like that of some Hadza or the general population, who are reportedly healthy people. And why should anyone else's gut microbiome look like some of these other people. Why? Just because a certain gut microbiome's bacterial profile is healthful, that doesn't mean it's the most healthful. That doesn't mean that other completely different gut microbiomes aren't healthful or even more healthful. Why couldn't someone have a compromised gut microbiome but be otherwise healthy because of something else or simply be asymptomatic while this compromised gut microbiome is slowly and silently shortening their lifespan. What if even the healthiest people on the planet are eating a suboptimal diet and their average mortality of 75 years of age could be 85 with a dietary change? I mean, even the vegans believe that the longest lived and healthiest people on the planet, like the Sardinians or Okinawans, are doing it wrong. And these people whose gut microbiomes are proposed as model, what do they eat? mostly plants. But what if someone eats mostly animal products, meets all of his nutritional needs, and lives just as long and healthy as the healthiest populations? Are we to assume that they are sick even though they have no symptoms of disease and have actually healed their bodies eating this way simply because their gut microbiome bacterial profile is different than the average plant eaters? How unscientific is that? It's like a vegan ridiculing a carnivore for lacking fiber digesting bacteria in his gut. Now, why the hell would someone who doesn't eat insoluble fiber need insoluble fiber digesting microbes in their gut? Why? Because animals have feelings too? Why would I need a wealth and a variety of carb digesting bacteria in my gut? when I eat hardly any carbs, which, by the way, are not essential. And why would anyone want to be a stinky and bloated fart machine with a higher risk of colon cancer anyway? And if eating only plants is the best way to have a healthy gut microbiome, why are gut issues the biggest problem in the vegan community? Next to low libido, of course. If you are such a gut microbiome expert, stench, why are you on the toilet seven times a day? Something doesn't add up, poopy. Check your math. Look, the bottom line is this. The gut microbiome is a fairly recent discovery and not much is known about the gut microbiome of the average omnivore, let alone someone that eats a plant-based diet or a meat-based one. And anybody who acts like a gut microbiome expert is too dumb to know just how dumb they are or they are a show for some other completely irrelevant agenda like veganism, which has nothing to do with animal welfare but simply prohibits eating meat like the religion that it is. Like the puppet agenda for the processed food and pharmaceutical industries that it is. Yay, veganism. Whatever the case may be with shriveled up simpletons like Hanch or that vampire Goji man, one thing's for sure, they constantly misrepresent and cherry pick the research. They have no clue what they're talking about. The subject of the gut microbiome is way above their pay grade and maybe, just maybe, if they are truly interested in the truth, maybe they should just stay in their lane. Or accept a debate or two. Cowards. Thanks for watching, guys, and look out for part two. Have a good day. <laughs>